Welcome back to Asian News and with me, Julia. Joint commissioning testing has started on Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway. The milestone Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway in Indonesia began joint commissioning and testing, paving the way for planned operation of the entire line in June 2023. Joint commissioning and testing refers to a critical process prior to the opening of the high-speed railway, which is aimed to ensuring the smooth operation of the train. All civil engineering works, such as roadbeds, bridges, culverts, and tunnels have been completed, and preparation for operation are being carried out in an orderly manner. The high-speed line, a landmark project under China proposed Belt and Road Initiative, connect Indonesia's capital Jakarta and Bandung. With a design speed of 300 km per hour, the railway spanning 142.3 km will cut the journey between Jakarta and Bandung from over 3 hours to around 40 minutes. Seven people died after the school's roof fell during gale in Thailand. Seven people were killed and at least 18 were injured after the roof of a school's gymnasium collapsed during a storm in Pichit province over 300 kilometers or 186 miles north of Bangkok. Emergency personnel worked through the wee hours of the morning to rescue injured victims from the wreckage and recovered of the bodies of six people, which include students, janitors and parents. Residents in the area reported that the collapse took place amid a violent storm. Local media also reported that a temporary relief center is being established near the disaster site. Meanwhile, Thailand's meteorological department announced that the start of the monsoon season and issued a warning for heavy rain in Upper Thailand throughout this week. Casinos workers hold protests as union members arrested. A Cambodian court sentenced Naga World Casino Unionist Jim Sitar to two years in jail, sparking protests from her supporters. According to the advocacy group Human Rights Watch, the Phnom Penh Municipal Court also handed out lighter sentences to eight other union leaders and did not jail them. Shim Sitar and the other six leaders, editors note, there were eight others, sacrificed so much to fight for the Khmer workers' working rights in the Naga World Casino Company. There was no encouragement from any single state institution, and on the contrary, this court sentenced the defenders of workers' right to jail and left the violator free. Where is the justice? <laughs> The defendants were charged with the incitement after they initiated a strike in December 2021 in protest of mass layoffs and alleged union busting, with local media reporting protests still taking place weekly since then. Malaysia Maritime Aerospace Exhibition opens in Langkawi. The 16th Langkawi International Maritime and Aerospace Exhibition opened in northern Malaysia's island after four years' heroes. The opening ceremony with an air show in front of the Mashuri International Exhibition Center was held in the presence of Malaysian Defense Minister Datuk Seri Muhammad Hassan and Transport Minister Anthony Loxio Fook. The ceremony also included special forces combat drills and pyrotechnic blasting displays. At the invitation of the organizer, Chinese People's Liberation Army PLA Air Force by Aerotic Team staged its first performance abroad using J-10C fighter jets. The organizer predicts a turnout of 45,000 delegates and trade visitors and a further 250,000 members of the public over the course of the event. Pope prays for cyclone victims in Myanmar and Bangladesh. Pope Francis prayed for the victims of a cyclone which has battered Myanmar-Bangladesh border.
I invite you to pray for the people living on the Myanmar-Bangladesh border who have been hard hit by a cyclone. There are more than 1,800,000 people, plus the many Rohingya, who are already living in precarious conditions. While I renew my closeness to these populations, I appeal to those responsible to facilitate the access of humanitarian aid and appeal to the sense of human and ecclesial solidarity to come to the aid of these brothers and sisters of ours. Western Myanmar and provinces in neighboring Bangladesh, where there is a large population of Rohingya Muslims and refugees, bore the burden of Cyclone Mocha, which is estimated to have killed hundreds and caused widespread damage. Vietnam prisoners of war reunite on 50th anniversary of homecoming. Former prisoners of war from the Vietnam War gathered at the Nixon Presidential Library in Yorba Linda, California to mark the 50th anniversary of the return home. The prisoners of wars and veterans first took part in parade through Yorba Linda where they were greeted by hundreds of cheering supporters waving U.S. flags along the parade road. My entire six and a half years in prison, I had absolutely zero doubt that my country would never forget me, that I would be brought home I, back to my country whether I was alive or did not survive. Um, that, the strength of having that knowledge was part of what got me through six and a half years of hell. And if we lose that today, if we don't aggressively approach fullest possible accounting of our missing in action, then how can I walk up to somebody that's wearing the uniform today and say, don't worry, son or, or ma'am, you won't be forgotten. Because if we ever lose that, we lose a lot of the strength that would help future soldiers get through a situation like what we went through. We all suffered in many, many ways that most people don't know anything about, you know, family separations and deaths and just bad circumstances, but we overcame it all. And talk about life-changing experiences. This group that you're meeting here today and those before us who now passed away accomplished amazing things with their lives after Vietnam. <laughs> The Nixon Presidential Library is marking the 50th anniversary of the return of the prisoners of wars with the new exhibition captured, shut down in Vietnam. Japanese condemn G7 for undermining regional stability. Protesters took to the street of Tokyo to voice opposition of the Group of Seven G7 Summit, which in their view only represents the interests of the few developed countries, while ignoring those of most countries and jeopardizing the regional stability in East Asia. The G7, consisting of the United States, Britain, Italy, France, Germany, Canada and Japan, convened its leaders' annual summit in Hiroshima after a month-long wave of protest denouncing the meeting was held across Japan. <laughs> The vast majority of countries that joined the United Nations are not in the G7 and have not benefited from the bloc. The G7's decision only represents the interest of the few developed countries. The Russian Foreign Minister Sunday said in a statement that the G7 had irreversibly deteriorated and that the forum had become an incubator where under the leadership of the Anglo-Saxons, destructive initiatives that undermine global stability are prepared. It also said it was convinced that G7 is a major contributor to the global problems and that the firm cannot reflect the interests of the Asia-Pacific region, South Asia, Middle East, Africa or Latin America. South Korea and European Union agreed to boost security ties amid Ukraine and North Korea tension. South Korea and European Union agreed to step up cooperation on security and tension over Russia's invasion of Ukraine and North Korean nuclear threats. Yoon and the European leaders in a joint statement condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a grave violation of international law. 
They also criticized North Korea's ongoing efforts to develop its nuclear arsenal and Pyongyang's threat of the possible use of nuclear weapons against South Korea. And just like we do not accept Russia's military aggression against Ukraine, we condemn the DPRK's constant nuclear saber rattling. We stand firmly by the Republic of Korea. Our new green partnership will boost cooperation in areas like renewables and green technology. Importantly, through this partnership, we will strengthen our cooperation on the safe operation of nuclear power, among other issues. Both sides also reached an agreement to boost health cooperation, under which they will work together to identify and counter health threats and assist other countries to prevent and respond to them. Thank you very much everyone, have a nice day and we will see you again soon. Bye!